chair recognizes Representative Gregg. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise tonight to urge my colleagues to support my common sense amendment to Senate Bill 500, a bill designed to streamline unemployment insurance collection without jeopardizing the solvency of the unemployment fund itself. As written, the bill does successfully stream, streamline the process, but it fails to address the solvency of the fund. It uses an inflexible set $2.5 billion threshold for determining the annual taxable wage base. We are punting on the opportunity to stabilize the fund balance to protect hardworking Michiganians who lose their jobs through no fault of their own. Let's learn from our past mistakes. Michigan borrowed $3.2 billion from the federal government to cover our obligations when the last economic crisis hit. My amendment removes the misguided $2.5 billion threshold to use a national best practice used by many states that sets the fund balance equal to what is needed to make only one year of benefit payments. Using this best practice to determine the taxable wage base, we could reach the appropriate fund level three years sooner than under the bill's current provisions. When questioned during committee about why use a $2.5 billion threshold, the department merely answered, we're comfortable with that amount and we're willing to risk not having enough to cover our obligations because we can borrow from the federal government interest-free. That is a disingenuous and turns out to be erroneous statement. We can only borrow at zero interest if we meet the federal government's schedule for reaching that best practice amount. And even then, we can only borrow at zero interest for less than one year. After that, market rates are used. In fact, that is exactly what happened the last time we hit an economic downturn. Market rates were ready to kick in, so the state had to bond for the debt to avoid the Fed's higher interest rate. Guess who is still paying off that debt? Our businesses. It's called an obligation assessment. To add further skepticism about this bill's real intent, we finally received revised estimates from the department this morning that if we pass this bill as is, the fund will not reach the best practice balance until 2025, risking our eligibility for any interest-free loans. Again, to be eligible, states must use the schedule that gets them to the recommended balance by 2019, six years before we would reach that mark under this bill as written. And that's only if we do not face another economic downturn over the next 10 years. Even when we use the higher taxable wage base that was in effect until just this past October, we wouldn't reach the target until 2022. And here we are, putting our state at further risk again. Michigan has been underfunding this obligation for decades. Without this amendment, SB 500 is another attempt to provide short-term gains to businesses at the expense of sound, long-term economic policy. With this amendment, we'll calculate the threshold at the national best practice level. We'll reduce the risk of borrowing again, better protect our businesses from additional obligation assessments, provide a mechanism to adjust for inflation and workforce changes, and provide additional protection to hard-working Michiganders who lose their jobs at no fault of their own. Sounds pretty common sense to me. Without this amendment, SB 500 puts our state at an increasing risk of not meeting our financial obligations. We've been down this road before. Let's do our job as legislators and make an easy fix to this bill that protects our state, our businesses, and our workers. I urge my colleagues to adopt this amendment, and I respectfully request a roll call vote. Thank you. 
Representative Gregg asks for a record roll call vote. Is the demand supported? The demand is not, is not supported. The question before the House is on the adoption of the amendment. The clerk will open the board. The amendment is not adopted.